to our friends and viewers around the world. My name is Olayeka Dan Salami. I am your host. Welcome to Know Your Right on NABN TV, a program that provides you general information about your constitutional right in the United States of America. The U.S. Constitution provides certain rights to all those residing in the United States. Whether you are dealing with immigration, housing, employment, you know, charge you with a crime, you are entitled to some basic constitutional right. Today, we will touch on immigration, particularly family-based green card and the new rule about public charge. To help us to navigate this very important topic, we have in our studio Carla Prosper, an immigration expert. Welcome to our show. Thank you for having me. Carla, um, I know you've been practicing for about uh, 13 years now. Yes. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. Well, I'm an, uh, I'm, an, I'm an attorney licensed to practice in New York and New Jersey. For the last 13 years, I've been practicing exclusively in immigration law. I'm a member of the American Immigration Lawyer Association. I deal with all kinds of immigration issues, whether it be family-based or employment law. And my clients are from all over the world, really every continent I believe I've dealt with. And um, I'm just very excited to be here with NABN TV and discuss immigration and what's going on these days. Um, my website is carlacprosper.com, and you can always get more information there and reach me from that website. Thank you very much. You mentioned family-based immigration. Uh, can you please tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So family-based immigration is um, the way that a majority of people obtain their green cards in the United States. It could either be through marriage or through parentage, through adoption. There's different categories for getting your immigration papers through family-based. Go ahead. The most common is through marriage. Usually a U.S. citizen marries a foreign national and they petition for them, whether the foreign national be abroad or currently living in the United States. And then depending on the age of the children, at times they can enter through that same petition. Or depending on the situation, the U.S. citizen will have to petition for every child of the relationship. Can you tell us how, does, how long does that, uh, that uh, if you file for uh, your spouse as a U.S. citizen, how long does it take to obtain your green card? Okay, that's a very, that's probably my number one question that I get asked. Um, if a U.S. citizen is filing for a spouse, if the spouse is residing in the United States and there's no issues, there aren't any criminal arrests, there aren't any previous immigration fraud issues, this case could be completed in about a year. And if you are in the United States applying for what is called adjustment of status, you'll be given a work permit and a social security card, which will give you that ability to work and prove that you are in a bona fide relationship and have bills with your spouse. Now, the process is a little different if it's abroad, because if the U.S. citizen is married to a foreign national who's living in another country, they have to go through USCIS in the United States and then the consular process. You're watching Know Your Rights on NABN TV. We'll be right back. Accident? Don't talk to anyone before calling the Orhi Law Firm at 281 903 7333. Orhi Law Firm understands your injuries. We will see that you are fully compensated for them. Call the Orhi Law Firm for personal injuries, business issues, family immigration, and other legal matters. You will be very glad you did. Call the Orhi Law Firm at 281-903-7333 or visit us at www.theorhelawfirm.com. The Orhi Law Firm will fight for you. Welcome back. Carla, we are talking about consular processing. Can you please enlighten us more about consular processing and what does it take? Of course. Consular processing is the process of obtaining your green card while living abroad. The U.S. citizen would petition for their spouse or children while in the United States 
or even if they are living abroad. Once the petition is approved, which usually takes five to six months for a U.S. citizen, the case would then be transferred to the consulate of the United States in whichever country, be it in Nigeria, be it in Senegal, and then the spouse, the family members who are living abroad would be scheduled for an interview at the consulate. At that interview, they would check for their medical records to make sure they don't have a, um, a communicable disease. They check to make sure that they have financial su support and no negative immigration or criminal history. If everything is completed perfectly at the consular interview, then the, the family would enter the United States as green card holders. Um, this process is a little more lengthy because you have to, the case has to be transferred over to the consulate. You have um, at times communications issues with getting paperwork from abroad um, and submitting it properly. So I would say the consular processing application could take about a year to 18 months, best case scenario. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Now, let me ask you this. You know, if a woman who is uh, being abused by um, a U.S. spouse, um, and uh, let's further say that, you know, this woman also has some children, so what are the options of this person if, uh, he, if she wants to terminate the, their relationship? So the way that the laws, the immigration laws are written, a woman or a man, because men are also victims of domestic abuse, do not have to remain in abusive relationship. There is a petition called um, the I-360. It's under the Violence Against Women's Act, short-term VAWA. And this allows the spouse of an abusive, um, an abusive partner to file a petition for immigration. And her children will be included if they are under 21 and um, not married. So in this situation, under 21 and unmarried is considered a derivative of this petition. Um, that's basically how it's done. Now, the children can also file an independent petition if they've been the victim of abuse by a step-parent or a biological parent that is a U.S. citizen or a permanent resident. That also falls under VAWA. But once I, again, do not let the term VAWA confuse you, men may also apply <laughs> as uh, <laughs> beneficiaries, and we have seen this. That, that's, that's very good. For, for instance, um, is there, let's say that a, a U.S. citizen file for his or her children. Okay. How does that work? All right. So a U.S. citizen files for their children, and there's different categories. It depends on the age of the child at the time of the petition. It also depends if there's, uh, believe it or not, if the father, if the child was born in wedlock or out of wedlock. A, uh, a child born out of wedlock to a U.S. citizen may still qualify for a petition, but immigration may require extra proof to prove that the father is involved in the child's life. Do they need DNA tests for this? At times, DNA tests, but in addition to DNA tests, they may want to see that the father has financially supported the child. They may want to see proof of payment of school records, photographs, affidavits from people who know of the relationship. This is a, now, now, before you continue, let me also throw this question. Let's say for argument's sake, or for example, that uh, someone has been taking care of a child, okay? Um, there's no biological relationship. Yes. But this person has been actually taking care of the child, you know, from day one, okay? Can this person now, who is a U.S. citizen, petition for someone that he or she has been taking care of, you know, from day one, you know, to become a permanent resident? You do not know how happy I am you asked me this question. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> because I'm, my family's from the Caribbean and we see this all the time. Um, unfortunately, U.S. immigration law doesn't recognize taking care of a child or recognizing a child as establishing a parent-child relationship. You must go through the channels of adoption in your country. You must hire a local attorney in your country and properly adopt that child before age 16. 
and live with that child before age 16 for two years for them to be considered a child for immigration purposes. It's a very complex part of the law and it ends up in a lot of heartbreak because there's a relationship there um, when you care for a child. And the child may call you mother, but in immigration, if it's not on the papers, if there wasn't a proper adoption, and trust me, they know all the laws of these countries and they will come back with it, it will not be considered a relationship. That's very interesting. So now let's continue with this uh, father filing for his or her kid. So now let's say that, you know, someone who is now age 40 okay. can a U.S. citizen father or mother say petition for someone who, uh, who is, is at, at, uh, at that age? Absolutely. The wait period will be a lot longer. For example, for U.S. citizens petitioning for a child over 21, we call them sons and daughters, they're no longer children, the wait is about seven to eight years. If they're married, you probably add another two, three years to that wait period. So maybe it could be about eight to 11 years, depending on um, the visa bulletin, which comes out every month. Is that what you refer to as priority date? That's priority date, correct. Now, a permanent resident could petition for an adult child, but that child cannot be married. So if a permanent resident has a um, a child, a son or daughter who is over 21 years old, they could absolutely petition for them, but that child may not marry. I see. But if a permanent resident petition for his or her spouse, can that spouse get um, work authorization? That's another excellent question. To apply for adjust, the only way you could get a work authorization is to apply for adjustment of status when you're physically present in the United States. And adjustment of status applies for people who have never fallen out of status or are, mem or are married to U.S. citizens or are minor children of U.S. citizens. So for a lawful permanent resident, they would have to speak with an attorney uh, for someone who is married to a lawful permanent resident, they would have to speak with an attorney and see if they even qualify for adjustment of status um, before they file and request a work permit. So that is a very case-by-case -case specific question. Are you saying that you know, it is possible you know, that someone who filed for um, a permanent resident, you know, filed for his or her spouse, you know, would be able to, um, under certain circumstances, can obtain it? he saw her um, work authorization. Under circumstances, if the spouse entered lawfully and remained lawfully. I see. There's very, and there's very specific situation when it occurs. I don't want to give the impression that it's very common, but there are circumstances where it can be but, done. But generally, they would not be able generally to. Generally, they would not. But what if uh, a, a U.S. citizen, if a U.S. citizen file for his or her spouse, that person will be able to obtain a permit, uh, work authorization, yes. is that correct? Yes. How long does that process take? So under the current administration, work permits are taking about seven months. They used to take three months. So for immigration practitioners, this is very, very challenging because with the work permit, um, a lot of uh, foreign nationals could get their driver's license and social security, but there has been an extreme delay and these cases are taking about seven months to adjudicate. Can you uh, petition the same time, you know, can you file your petition, your work authorization petition and your 485 and your I-130, can you file all this at the same time? Yes, if you're in the United States, it could all be filed in the same time. If you're married to a U.S. citizen, that is uh, absolutely the best way to do it. Just for the sake of our viewers, you know, when I refer to I-130 and I-485 and uh, 762, what, do we, what are we talking about? Okay. So the I-130 is the, married, the family petition. So any familiar relationship that can be petitioned uses the I-130. And um, in marriage cases, you would definitely file the I-130. Now there's a supplemental form for additional information called the I-130A. So that's the first step. And even if you're a permanent resident petitioning for your family, you have to file the I-130. Uh, so now, let me now ask you this. Let's say that you know someone who is uh, under deportation proceeding, mm -hmm. and he or she has a 
uh, a permanent residence spouse. What relief, if any, would this person be entitled to? Well, that is another case-by-case -case situation. At times, they could qualify for what's called cancellation of removal if they've been living in the U.S. for more than 10 years and can prove that their spouse would suffer extreme and exceptionally unusual hardship, which is a very high burden of hardship. Um, perhaps their permanent resident can naturalize and they could apply for adjustment of status. Or maybe they fall into one of the exceptions as well where they could file for adjustment of status. So it's very case by case. Does the same rule apply to someone who is a U.S. citizen uh, filing uh, and his or her spouse is in some sort of a deportation proceeding? Yes, but with a U.S. citizen, you could also, if the, um, if the respondent, if the person in removal proceedings has a lawful entry and is married to a U.S. citizen, you could file for an adjustment of status before the court. So, and, to cancel out the removal. Uh, and uh, how does that work? So you would file the I-130 and the 485. Unfortunately, a judge doesn't make a decision. Well, I don't know if it's unfortunate or not, but the judge doesn't make a decision on the marriage. An immigration officer does. And once you've had, the clients have had that interview on the marriage, the case gets forwarded to the judge for a determination on the adjustment of status. So what if someone who, um, let's say that, you know, uh, immigration comes to somebody's house, knock on the door, the person was in home, you know, and then, you know, they left a note, you know, say immigration wants to want to talk to you, person is already out of status, okay? But has a, sp has a girlfriend or boy or a fiancé, but they have not been married, what would be, you know, the best course of action for this individual? Well, um, once again, it's a case-by-case -case analysis, but in this situation, a fiancé is not a viable relationship for immigration purposes, so it may be in their best interest to marry their partner if it's a true and bona fide relationship and obtain an attorney who could help them prepare what is called a stay of removal. No, there, there, is, there is no immigration, there is no, no proceeding, no, oh, no, no proceeding at all. You know, okay. there was just a knock on the door, you know, look, okay. looking for this person who, who is already out of status. So then you should seek, the immigration knows where you're living. You should seek an attorney and perhaps have the attorney appear on your behalf and have the attorney submit a letter and make the pri preliminary inquiries before you yourself go to ICE. Thank you very much, Carla. Uh, I know we were talking about uh, um, certain paperwork or certain petition that you have to file, you know, and I mentioned in I-130, I also talk about uh, 485. I know you are already telling us about uh, I-130. So uh, what does it mean when we talk about 485? What does that entail? The I-485 is the application for adjustment of status. So that would be the application filed to obtain your green card, your permanent residency in the United States. So how about the four, I mean, 765? What does that mean? The 765 is the application for the employment authorization. So can we say that, you know, 485, I mean, I-130 is actually the engine for these two petitions we just mentioned. That's correct. So without I-130, you can't file 485 and you can't file 765. Is that correct? That's correct for family-based cases. Unless uh, it's VAWA, that's a different petition for abuse. I see. So, and 485 can only be filed, you know, together with your I-130 if you are, if you are a U.S. citizen. Yes. If you're married to a U.S. citizen, if the, it's a marriage between a U.S. citizen and a foreign national, then you could file the package together. Also, if a U.S. citizen is filing for a child that is under 21, not married, here in the United States, they could file the paperwork together. Last one, I'm sorry. Also, if a U.S. citizen is filing for a parent, um, a U.S. citizen who is 21 years old and older is filing for their parent, they could file it all together. Those are what is called an immediate relative. Okay. Thank you for watching us today on Know Your Right on NABN TV. During the next show, we will continue the topic of your rights under immigration law. And we will discuss some of the employment-based green card and deportation. We would like to 
take this opportunity to appeal to you to advertise your product and be one of our sponsors so that we can continue to disseminate important information about the rights that you have under United States Constitution and other federal and state law. Your right when an immigration officer knock on your door. Your right you know, when the police officer stop you. Information is power. We would like to equip you with the sufficient information and dispel the, the misinformation and myth that may be going on in our community. We also hope to allay the fear of some of you when it comes to the law. Please stay tuned. Finally, please know that this is a program that has not created any attorney-client relationship. If you have a legal matter or pending case, it is better to review all of the facts and circumstances of your particular situation with an attorney in order to determine the best course of action. You may contact any guest or any other attorney for further consultation if you wish. Neither any BNTV nor its host is liable for any consultation you may have with any guest of this show. We are merely providing you general information. Thank you for watching us. Please stay tuned. We'll be back in the next week. NABN-TV, inspiring a new generation.